Aum. Dehendriya gunan karman yamale satchidatmani Adhyasyantya vivekena gagane nilatadivat Deha Indriya Gunan Qualities of the Body and Senses Karmani Actions Amale Pure Such Chit Atmani On the Atman The Absolute Existence Knowledge Adhyasyanti Superimpose Avivekena By Lack of Discrimination Gagane in the sky, Nilatadivat, blue color and the like. Because they lack discrimination, fools superimpose all the varied functions of the body and the senses on the Atman, the Sat Chit, absolute existence knowledge. Just as they attribute blue color and concavity to the sky. Namaste. What is wrong with this statement? I am making a video. Well, it's superimposition. I, the self, am not doing anything. I'm simply watching. The intelligence and mind and body and the energies and these objects in the material world are all arranged in such a way as to produce a video. But I'm not the doer. This is superimposition. And the reverse is discrimination, viveka. So the cure for superimposition is to see the difference between the relative and the absolute, between the temporary and the eternal. That's viveka. Viveka is knowing the difference, and not only knowing the difference theoretically, but seeing it in real life, in real time. This is the transformation that leads to enlightenment. It is not an action, but it's a view. In other words, it's a way of classifying the things that we experience. In the normal or unenlightened state of mind, a person identifies the actions of the intelligence, mind, body, senses, and so forth, and identifies with them thinking this is I and this is mine. But this is adhyasa. This is superimposition. This is identification. And it leads to suffering. In fact, it is the cause of suffering because we are mixing up the eternal I, the self, the source of consciousness, with its objects. And the objects are non-eternal. Therefore, when the objects change or go away, we suffer we come to expect things are going to be a certain way. And one day we wake up and they're not. So because we identify with those things that change, when they change, they cause suffering. Because nobody likes to think that I am changing I is supposed to be the most stable datum in consciousness. But actually, only consciousness is stable. 
Everything else is in constant flux. The moon and sun are constantly moving through different signs and creating various effects due to their alignment with different fixed stars and uh, the relationship of their current positions with their positions at the time of birth. This is called aspects or transits in astrology. And because these conditions are constantly changing, you can wake up one morning and everything's different. And it's hard to even see why, unless you know astrology. You can look into it. But this is all because the original mistake is identifying with that which is not eternal. This vivekaha, this discrimination, is the first qualification mentioned by Shankaracharya in his commentary on Brahma Sutra 111. In his introduction, he says, there are four qualities. The first one is vivekaha, discrimination of the eternal from the non-eternal, which really boils down to discrimination of consciousness from its objects. That's why for years now we've been talking about consciousness. Consciousness this, consciousness that, yeah? And the whole chart and the whole thing, you know, that you've seen a million times, right? But have you really understood it? Are you able to look at your own life through the relationships and discriminations presented in the chart? Can you identify when you're in different states of consciousness? Or, to put it another way, when your attention is focused on the different states of consciousness, or when the phenomena that you perceive are based on these four different states of consciousness? Can you discriminate them? Can you identify them? Can you analyze your experience and put it in those buckets? See, this is the key to reduction and elimination of suffering. This is the practice of Advaita philosophy. Advaita is based on knowledge, not action. In other words, if you read some Vedic scripture and it says, a human being must perform sacrifice. This is an injunction. Uh, this is giving an action that you must do. And similarly, the scriptures can say things like, one must not injure or harm any living entity, or through inaction, allow them to come to harm. This is a prohibition. It also specifies an action. In this case, not doing something. But then the knowledge, you are Brahman, does not specify any action. It's simply a fact. And what is a fact? A fact is a view. It's a way of seeing things. It's a point of view. We've often given the example, if you're down in the valley in a village, you look around and you're going to see houses, streets, people, and so on. But then if you go outside the village and climb up the sides of the valley, you start to see a different view, a much wider view a view in which the village itself becomes more and more insignificant. And the same is true of consciousness. As you ascend the different states of consciousness, the view of your life, what we normally call my life, <laughs> becomes more and more insignificant. 
the little things that bother us every day bother us less and less. Because why? I am not this body. I am not this mind. I'm not even the intelligence. I am awareness alone. And that awareness may have certain objects in different states of consciousness, but that's all they are. They're simply objects of awareness. They're not me. They're not mine. They don't affect me when they change. I remain the same. Conscious awareness, eternally. This is realization. This is knowledge. This is jnana. This is knowing. See, this is Brahman, referenced in this verse as sat-chit. Sat means eternal, unconditional existence. And chit means eternal, unconditional consciousness or awareness in the lack of an object. And these are the properties of the self, the soul, the Atman, I. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is the answer to Ramana Maharshi's question, who am I? Who am I also includes what am I and how does this all work? <laughs> It's not a simple question. It's a deep question with many, many different permutations. What am I? Am I this body? Am I this mind? This identity? This person? Huh? Or what am I? Am I something else other than a person? Yeah, I'm consciousness. Consciousness has no form, has no qualities. It's like a mirror. It simply reflects whatever comes into its range of vision. So because I am consciousness, I do not change. I am not affected by the transformations of the objects of consciousness. And if I have wisdom, I don't identify with them either. So, someone can injure the body. Huh? It's not that difficult. The body is a fragile thing. It's very delicate. Any little change in its conditions, and it's disturbed, you know. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm conscious. And nothing, whatever happens, even death, cannot change the fact that I am conscious. And then the uh, subject of death and the between lives state came up in the comments recently. And this is discussed in detail in the Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra in chapters three and four. It's elaborately discussed with all kinds of arguments and discussions and deep analysis of what happens to the being, the soul, if you will, the Atman, in between one life and another of the gross body. The gross body is subject to death and reincarnation. The subtle body continues to exist at the outside the whole duration of the material universe, or until one attains enlightenment. When enlightenment is fully attained and the gross body drops off, the subtle body also dies. So this is what we are aiming for. This is what we're trying to reach. We're trying to reach the end of karma, the end of illusion, the end of identification and superimposition. This is enlightenment. Om.
tatsat aung shakti aung aung namah shivaya <laughs>